untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green combo deck titled Saros Sagas as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And this deck is very single-minded as it only really enacts one game plan, but it does so very consistently, and that is to cheat a turn 3 Saros Emissary into play. The 7 mana 7 7 Angel with Flying, when it enters the battlefield, lets us choose a card type, and then we and creatures we control have protection from the chosen card type. So if we name creature against a lot of creatures decks in the format, that's going to be game over as the opponent can no longer deal damage to us and the emissary also won't be able to be blocked by opposing creatures so we can usually close out the game in a couple attacks. And then the deck is pretty vulnerable to combo decks and control decks because if they don't necessarily care about an early stars emissary, if they're playing plenty of removal and sweeper effects, they can easily answer it. And of course, if their win condition doesn't rely on the creatures dealing damage or some other permanent type that the emissary can shut down, then of course the early emissary is not necessarily going to help us out. But in order to play a turn 3 Emissary, we can now rely on a Careful Cultivation, a new addition from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, that can be channeled for 1 and a green, so we discard it to create a 1-1 one, one, green Human Monk creature token that can tap for green mana. And we can also replace Cultivation on turn 2 with Emergent Sequence to get the same result, a sorcery that lets us search for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tapped, and it turns into a creature with plus 1 counters equal to the number of lands that entered the battlefield this turn, so it's usually going to be a 2-2 two, two creature that enters tapped. And then on turn 3, we can tap or monk or the land we searched up with sequence for 1 mana. We've got 4 mana total, which is enough to cast either Transmogrify or Indomitable Creativity for X equals 1. This will allow us to destroy our creature that we just created on the previous turn to essentially search up our single copy of Saros Emissary, which is the only creature in the deck that we're capable of hitting with Creativity or Transmogrify, which is why we're not allowed to play any other creatures in the deck. Now to make up for the lack of creatures, we still have enchantments and other ways of generating creature tokens with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, another new addition from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. On chapter 1 makes a 2-2 Goblin Shaman token that when it attacks creates a treasure token, so that can help us ramp and can potentially give us a target for Transmogrify or Creativity, potentially multiple targets, as Creativity can also target artifacts. Then we get to discard up to two cards on chapter 2, and if we do draw that many cards, so that's useful for finding missing combo pieces, maybe the opponent countered one of our spells or had a hand disruption spell, so we can still find a backup copy, and then finally transforms into reflections of Kiki Jiki, a 2-2 creature that can potentially make copies of non-legendary creatures until end of turn, so it could technically copy our Saros Emissary as well, as long as it's not naming creature, because reflections won't be able to copy the Emissary if it has protection from creatures as we won't be able to target it. And then we also have a Jugan Defends the Temple, another 3 mana saga from Kamigawa that creates the same 1-1 one, one monk that we get from Careful Cultivation. Then on chapter 2 we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of up to 2 target creatures and finally transforms into Remnant of the Rising Star, which we can also potentially target with Transmogrify or Creativity, otherwise a reasonable mana sink in games where we maybe don't quite get there on the Saros Emissary plan and need to go on the backup game plan instead. So that's where all these three mana sagas come in handy, and we can potentially cast these on turn two, thanks to a turn one Strike at Ridge, which generates a treasure token, can also be flashed back for two and a red. Every now and then we can use the treasures to hard cast a Saras Emissary by making white mana, but for the most part we're playing Strike at Ridge, so we can potentially play turn two, Jugan Defensive Temple, or Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which sort of replaces the need for a two mana card. So as long as we have one of our eight Transmogrify effects, a turn two accelerant and a a couple lands or a strike at rich with our three mana cards we can usually still combo off on turn three with transmogrify or creativity then we also have three copies of Chandra Torch of Defiance, which is kind of our backup plan against control strategies. It's usually not going to be enough to carry a game by itself, but a turn 3 Chandra could potentially put the opponent in an awkward spot, as a Planeswalker can tick up, generating card advantage, can make mana with the second plus one, which is useful for casting a bigger indomitable creativity, to potentially search up multiple copies of Saros Emissary at once, so we can give protection from creatures, maybe instant sorceries, even Planeswalkers can come up and enchantments against the enchantment deck, so if we can get multiple angels in play at once, they can sort of protect each other, which can also be important. 
and then Chandra can eventually ultimate, giving us an emblem that can also close out the game. And then as we mentioned, creativity can be used to destroy multiple artifacts and or creatures we control to get Sarah's Emissary. Also don't forget that we can sometimes use these as removal for opposing cards as well, which can come up in a pinch, even if it's not our primary game plan, but still important to keep in mind. And then a mana base needs a lot of red mana because we need triple red on turn 3 for creativity, so we can't really afford to play any basic forests or other mono green sources. So it's 8 basic mountains alongside Crucible of Defiance, the new legendary land that can channel to make a bunch of 1-1 tokens, which can also give us a target for transmogrify or creativity, can even do it at instant speed, which is another big advantage that cultivation has over sequence, as we can channel at instant speed to potentially play around sorcery speed removal, and then the opponent may not expect the turn 3 combo. And then the rest of our mana base includes a whole bunch of red-green dual lands with our pathway, rockfall veil, vale, rootbound crag and stomping ground. And rootbound crag is also the reason why we're not playing any other fancy lands in the mana base and just going with the 8 basic mountains. Otherwise we could conceivably play some white lands to potentially hardcast Saras Emissary as well. But just want to make the mana base as consistent as possible in casting our turn 2 ramp card into a turn 3 combo piece. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. So this could be a Spirit Dancer deck, in which case the combo is going to be quite effective. If it's Red-Black Arcanist, it's a little trickier, but getting an early Emissary is still effective. Could also be like a Blue-Black Mill deck, which is probably the worst case scenario, although could still be winnable. Now let's take a look at our actual hand. And yeah, it looks fine. We've got Strike at Rich, turn 2... Defense the Temple or Mirror Breaker to set up our combo. So I'll keep. Probably fine to shock on turn one. And Fable Passage points towards probably Rogues. So Defense the Temple versus Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Kind of liking Defense the Temple here. That way we don't have to attack to make a treasure necessarily. Opponent did fetch a mountain, so red black arcanist it is. And a magmatic channeler. Okay, so now the question is do we want to go for the combo right now? Or do we wait? The Arcanist deck doesn't have a ton of removal that answers emissary. Maybe like a Blood Chief's Thursday could kick, so naming sorcery could be okay. Although naming creature is also a relatively safe bet. They could have multiple instants that they can combine to take care of the Emissary, like the uh, deal 2 damage, but deal 6 if you have the uh, required cards in Graveyard. So there is an argument for waiting to cast a bigger creativity, but at the same time the opponent could also play a discard spell. So I feel like I'm still gonna pull the trigger here on creativity for 1. And then... Given their start, do I go for instant, creature, or sorcery? I feel like Blood Chief's Thirst is probably the biggest threat right now, since they don't have a very full graveyard. Although Channeler could easily enable their graveyard. Let's name sorcery. Also gives us protection from sorcery, so can be targeted by discard spells, which is not irrelevant. Right, opponent discarding Synthesizer. Finding Unholy Heat, so that's one of the cards I mentioned. If they have multiple copies of Unholy Heat, they could potentially take over the Emissary. Adversary just a 2-2. Two -two. It's gonna hang back. Transmogrify the draw. Alright, so... Probably fine to play Fable and then pay two life so we can put a plus one counter on it. And that's also part of our fair game plan, being able to play these sagas, which are relatively powerful by themselves, especially when facing more mid rangey decks. And we'll attack for seven. So, not a bad turn four, all things considered. We'll see if they can answer Emissary. If they do, we have Transmogrify to potentially find a backup. Opponent found Inquisition, which doesn't do much here. 
Now by naming sorcery we also won't be able to target our own creatures with a second creativity or transmogrify, but that's usually okay if that means we get to keep our angel. Opponent cast the Inquisition, has to target themselves, which I guess can enable their Delirium on Unholy Heat, and now they could cast two copies conceivably. Fair enough. But now we've got Transmogrify and our opponents empty-handed, so they don't have much going on. And what do I want to discard? Probably Cultivation, keep Defense a Temple. And then I can Transmogrify after attacking. That seems fine. And do I prefer the 3-3 three, three on the ground? Or the 2-2 two two in the air. Probably prefer the flyer at this point. And then now I think I name sorcery again because a single unholy heat's not gonna really help them. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand does not feature turn three combo, so we mulligan. It's that simple really. Okay, this could potentially get there if we draw third land, strike it rich, turn two defensive temple, turn three creativity. So I'll try it. And then happy to put an angel on the bottom. Up against turn one Reckless Ringleader, so a red aggro deck, which should be a good matchup if we can get an early angel down, although they might have removal for our tokens. So we can decide between Fable or Defense the Temple. Let's see how many Burning Tree Emissaries they have on turn 2. Alright, no Emissary, just a Firebrand, although Firebrand can kill a 1-1 token. So I'd probably go for Fable of the Mirror Breaker instead. And hope we can make a Treasure or 2. And then we can technically also use creativity on our treasure token if we have enough mana. Turn 3 could see Anax. Ooh, Rampaging Frostodon instead. Still fine. Does not prevent us from winning with a combo. Opponent stays back with Frostodon, so we can't attack and make a treasure as easily. Can discard two cards, one emissary can go, and then... Might want to get rid of the second creativity. Keep defense the temple. All right, good cultivation at instant speed. Don't think it's worth it to throw in my token just to make a treasure. Although it's actually a close call because the treasure is more difficult for the opponent to interact with. As opposed to a creature, which they could maybe stomp. So there's still an argument for attacking. Could also then flashback Strike It Rich. And then next turn, Creativity for one on my treasure token. Plays around most removal they have. So yeah, let's do that. It does mean taking quite a bit of damage off my shock land. But it sort of guarantees that we get an emissary in play. Which uh, still doesn't necessarily guarantee the win, because Storm from Bone Crusher prevents all damage, which also gets around the protection from emissary. So they could still use Bone Crusher to potentially get those last points of damage in after getting us low, but I think we just hope they don't have Bone Crusher. And then I guess that also means I don't have to play around a lot of instant speed removal on my two toughness creature, but they still have Firebrand to deal with the one ones and getting the extra mana from the treasure seems worth it, so we'll try this. But yeah, there is an argument for making a token with Cultivation. Opponent actually took it, maybe playing around removal on Ferocidon. So if that's the case, I guess I can just play a tapped Stomping Ground and Cultivation at instant speed as opposed to Shocking to Strike at Rich. That seems like the safest course of action that doesn't take a lot of damage. Opponent does have Torbrain. So in response, I want a Cultivation so I don't take more damage from Ferocidon. Even though that means they can maybe kill it with Firebrand. But Firebrand would have been able to kill the 2-2 two -two 
as well. Alright, so that dies. We take some damage, that's fine. So we take a bunch from Ferocidon. So now it's actually interesting. If I were to creativity and name creature, I guess we would have protection from the Ferocidon. So I guess that still works. Uh, but I could technically kill the Ferocidon as well with creativity for x equals 2. But I guess there's no need and then I can get rid of both my creatures. So I can get two angels since there's still two left. And then one on creature, one on instant maybe, just to try and close out the game faster. Or I could go for land because they do have a Ramana Prunes. Although they would need to sacrifice two of those to kill me. So I think instance and creature is probably the safest here. I guess there's also an argument for enchantments, because they sometimes play the enchantment that prevents us gaining a life, but they also have Ferocidon, so maybe they don't have both. So Ferocidon triggers, but we don't take any damage, thanks to our protection. And then now we've got a pretty fast clock with Emissary. Just gotta dodge a Bone Crusher. Opponent does actually have Ramana Prunes, times two. So, can block here. Take out some creatures. And they have the Stomp, which can target themselves, which will do it here. Alright, fair enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And what do we think of this hand missing a Transmogrify effect? So we'll mulligan... Well, this is missing a third land, I guess, but pretty likely to find one, so I'll try it. And then should be fine keeping one creativity, bottom transmogrify, and then crag into the Crucible of Defiance, cast Emergence Sequence, and we've got two draw steps to find an untapped land, so basically, to cast our transmogrify effects on three. And if not, we can still maybe defense the temple. Alright, green-white life gain deck is a good matchup for us. They have very little in the way of interaction. And even if they gain a million life, they won't necessarily be able to beat an angel. So, this should be pretty much game over. Now it's going to take a while for us to maybe kill the opponent if they don't immediately give up. They can potentially have something like a Kabira takedown in their mana base, which could still deal with our Angel. But uh, still happy to get an Angel in play here, I think. Alternatively, we could play Defense the Temple. So we can Creativity for two, so one can name Land and one can name Creature. So is that something we're maybe considering here? Yeah, I guess that's maybe safer. Because if our opponent does manage to gain infinite life with the Scurry Oak combo, then uh, they can scry through their entire deck with Moon Dancer and maybe find like a one-off answer like Kabira Takedown. So there's probably no real downside to waiting a turn since Apparition can't interact with what I've got going on. And yeah, then they shouldn't have any outs. At least not judging from typically played green-white life gain deck lists. So X equals 2. Maybe an Ajani Planeswalker could still wipe my board. So we can name Creature and Instance, so that shuts down Kabira Takedown. And we'll see if our opponent concedes or keeps playing in the hopes of gaining infinite life and maybe drawing into one of their few answers. Right, there's a company. Double Voice of the Blast doesn't matter.
So yeah, the only, I guess, commonly played answer that's left for the opponent to draw would be an Ajani. So if we can keep their life total below what would be 35, I believe, we should be safe. So yeah, the only way they could maybe still get there is with the infinite life combo, Scurry Oak plus Heliot, which they're still missing both. I can double block Moondancer, take it out, since both of my angels have protection from creatures. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this one? Don't have any transmogrify effect, so it looks like a mulligan. Once again, no combo piece. So we'll have to go to 5. And there we go. Can get rid of Defends the Temple, and between Transmogrify and Creativity, I guess we'll keep Creativity since we wouldn't have any trouble with the Triple Red with this hand. So Creativity is a bit more flexible. And then Green Source on 1, so we can play a sequence, get a Mountain, combo on 3. We're up against what looks like a blue-white control deck, which is our worst matchup. Although, can maybe go for a turn 3 Chandra, which might be better than getting an early Emissary out. So let's try that instead. I know, I know. Oh, this... Just too many ways for the opponent to potentially bounce our Angel with like a Teferi, wipe the board with a Wrath, which we can protect against. Or have another removal spell. Looks like they're on the Lotus Field version, so they probably have a Stifle effect to keep their Lotus in play. So points off to a good start as well. And yeah, I guess we'll uh, plus see what's up. Just a mountain. And then I can attack for two and then creativity just to get an angel. And then I think we name Planeswalker, since that's the most likely form of interaction they have between 5 and 4 mana to ferry. Although they can still use those to potentially interact with Chandra. So as I've said, not really expecting to win this matchup. Emergent Sequence. Doesn't really matter if we play that first, so we'll plus Chandra. In case we find one of our three mana sagas, which seems better. Resolves. And then I'll happily ultimate Chandra next turn, although we have to watch out for another Stifle effect, which could counter it, which would uh, be quite painful. So we might have to tick up for an extra turn, even though that means more ways for the opponent to find interaction. All right, they have a Teferi anyway, so that can minus on Chandra. Can at least finish off the ferry here, but still leaves us in a pretty rough spot. Discard emissary and sequence. So we redraw Chandra. And then we can play Chandra plus Mirror Breaker. And then I guess we'll use the mana here. So I can maybe discard lands to the second chapter. So yeah, turn 3 Chandra, especially on the play, is sort of the best case scenario in this matchup, but it's such a bad matchup that I'm still very unfavored. Divine Purge deals with our tokens. Wouldn't be getting those back, so another powerful addition from Alchemy, which is part of the reason why this control deck has gained popularity. All this cards. Both cards here, I think. Could technically play the aura to give my reflection reach to block the proctor, although it seems unlikely for me to try an ultimate at Chandra anyway. So probably fine plussing. Defense the temple I'll cast. Gets countered. Alright, so they can sort of keep Chandra in check. They are down to two cards, 
But a fateful absence cleanly deals with Chandra. Alright, so we still have our reflections to maybe leverage. Another one coming up. And a backup Chandra, that's nice. Opponent can start making tokens with Castle. And I could copy your reflections with the reflections. Or I can just attack for two, which is basically the same. Uh, let's start by playing Chandra. Opponent cycles, so no token this turn. And then I could add mana to crack the clue or deal two damage. I guess we'll exile top card. And then I could copy the reflections, but probably fine to just attack for two. Right, the Wandering Emperor can exile Kikijiki. I've learned much during My judgment is final. Proctor goes after Chandra. And we can still crack the clue here. Although there is an argument for keeping the treasure around in case we find a creativity. Right, Crucible can make some hasty tokens, which is still useful. Two damage, and then we can channel... ...and attack. And then... There's an argument for sending more than one token at the Emperor in case they have a, another charm here to steal one of my tokens. Although then they probably would have used that before I got a chance to attack, because now it would be tapped. So, yeah, these can go face. Alright, bonus down to seven. Back to wandering. And we'll pass it back. Opponent's got the charm, it's just gonna draw two with it, fair enough. And at the fairy here of the Monaria, it's an excellent draw. Can plus to draw, untap Lotus Fields, make more mana. Defends a temple, it's not the worst. So probably plussing here, or we could go after Proctor to try and pressure Teferi, but that seems like it's going to take a long time to actually work out. Although then again, it's not like I'm ever going to reach the ultimate on Chandra. So maybe it is fine to kill Proctor. And then, where do we attack? Might have to go after Teferi. Could try and go face. Think going all at Teferi is probably still the play. And hope there's no big shark token incoming. Yeah, there's a big shark token incoming. So that's going to kill our Chandra as well, and as we pretty much expected since our opponent's first land drop, we're going to lose this game. But at least we gave it a shot, and yeah, Chandra put up a fight, but just not quite enough to turn this matchup around, which is pretty hopeless to begin with. The fairy draws, opponent plays a haul. Chandra down. At least we get a few plus one counters here, which should help. But between Teferi and all their lands, they don't really need much more to close out the game. And they still have four cards in hand, so... So... 
I can attack. Opponent can eat one of my two powered creatures with her hull. Probably still the play. Don't know if there's a point in going after Teferi at this point. And opponent's going to steal one of my tokens now with a charm like we mentioned last time. So they're unable to use hull at least. So I guess trading a token for a token is an option. It's not a great option though. So maybe I just pass and then hope to hit another creativity to get triple angel and hope they don't have a wrath of god. Could be the play. They have gone through a few copies of charm so they might not have a counter spell left. And we do have two emissaries left in the deck I believe. So like one on Planeswalker, one on Creature, maybe gets there. Let's skip to the good part. But a lot has to go right for that to be an out. Shark goes face, down to 14. Cultivation's not what we were hoping for. I can at least make a token at instant speed and sink a bunch of mana into growing it with a remnant. So I guess that's the plan now. Can't attack into hall, so we'll pass. Opponent can make a token with castle. Alright. So they're going to go up to six cards in hand here in a second. So unlikely that they don't have any interaction here. I guess if we have seven power in play, going for a creativity for two, then we name instant and creature. They may be unable to interact and we can sneak a lethal in, but again, very unlikely. Lotus field number two. Sacks two lanes. And shark attacks. And then we'll float some mana. So can spend six mana into pumping or monk. And keep our artifact token for potential creativity. It looks like our opponent's gonna take an extra turn here with discontinuity, which is why they pause in our draw step. They might as well cast it in our upkeep before we take our draw step, because now we got a free mountain. But discontinuity a powerful part of the blue-white control deck, letting them essentially take an extra turn. And of course combines nicely with the extra mana from Lotus Field and Teferi. So very much possible that we don't get to take another turn. Take five. And a Day of Judgment to clear the board and shatter our dreams, basically. The fairy close to ultimate as well. I guess I'll hang on to my land for Fable. Even though I could sink more mana into the Remnants ability. Although I'm probably going to have to chump the Hall of the Storm Giants anyway. Opponent can bounce my token with a Soaring City, and Fateful Absence will finally clear a path for Hall of the Storm Giants to end our misery. So yeah, pretty much predicted our downfall on turn one. 
But it took a while for the point to actually get there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand actually features the turn 3 combo, despite having double emissary, which of course we're not that into. But I'm still gonna keep, and then hope we're up against a creature deck for once. Well, opponent is a monorat, which is technically a creature deck, although they can still have plenty of interaction, including Stomp to finish us off after getting an Angel down. They've got double burning tree to start out. So yeah, if we can dodge a bone crusher, we should be able to get there. Even an ember cleave here wouldn't be lethal. And we'll save the creativity for later and transmogrify for now. And other cards to potentially worry about include, like, a Roiling Vortex could slowly ping us. Yeah, there it is, Speak of the Devil. Although it's only one per turn, so it's still gonna be slower than the Emissary, which can kill the opponent in three attacks. Okay, let's go for Fable. Hit you for seven. Opponent's down to 12, we can hit them for 9. Torbran, I guess, increases the damage output from Vortex. So that's kind of scary. And uh, Double Emissary can go. So let's see, if I hit them for 9, Chandra can deal 2 more. So then they would die to their own Roiling Vortex, that seems good. All right, there we go. So, get the better hands of the red aggro deck this time, dodging that stomp onto the next one. All right, we're on the play, missing a transmogrify effect, so that's an easy mulligan. This hand is all sorts of awful, and this we can keep. And yeah, don't really need all these extra cards. We've got the combo rolled up. Just gotta hope that we're playing against a creature matchup. Watery Grave is not one of those. But, you know. Turn 3 Angel could maybe still get there. Another tapped Watery Grave into Stitcher Supplier, so looks like maybe a Reanimator deck. Alright, so let's see how they manage a turn 3 Angel naming creature. And then if they get their own Angel, I guess it's going to be a bit of a staring contest. Could also name Sorcery to prevent their one-mana removal from killing our Angel. But I think that's maybe for the second Angel to name. And for now, hope they don't have it. Opponent passes. Can get in for seven. Opponent's also missing white mana for flashback mending and rights. Go for Fable. Alright, still no white mana. But an Ashok prevents us from searching. Does that matter? Don't think so. And then what we discard. Don't mind keeping the creativity. Maybe defense a temple and land can go. Sure. And then we'll attack. Probably just go face. Does Ashok matter? If they don't have white mana, I don't think it does, since rites, mending, and priest all require white mana to be used from the graveyard. Although I guess they could mill a creature that's scarier than Emissary. 
Although I kind of wanted to keep creativity to maybe answer their emissary if they do manage to reanimate it. So maybe I'm not supposed to do anything here with my creativity. And then, let's see. Yeah, I don't really see a reason to kill Ashok, because if I only deal two to them, even with nine damage next turn, we wouldn't have lethal. So let's go face. And then I think we hang on to creativity to maybe answer their angel if they manage to find a reanimation spell. Right, Ashok minuses. They did mill Jengataxius, Progress Tyrant. That's not going to save them here. All right, it's going to be a five mana burial rights on their angel, naming creature. And then now we can creativity for a whole bunch. So X equals three. We still have three angels left. Why not? Targeting their angel and our two creatures. And hope they don't hit another angel pretty much. Oh no, they hit another angel. Well, now I'm not sure how this is going to end. We can name sorcery. And what other interaction do they typically run? Yeah, it's just a sorcery, the one mana removal spell, and then they might have some creatures that they can reanimate that are more problematic than just more emissaries. But um, maybe go for land in case they have the land that can bounce an angel. Could see that. But yeah, the fact that they spiked another emissary is gonna mean that we can actually damage them. I can take out Ashok. And then now it's probably gonna come to decking or us drawing another transmogrify effect for their emissary. So should maybe keep these in hand in case I find another mirror breaker saga. If they have something like Shieldreds, they could start killing our angels one by one. And I guess I could reanimate Jingataxius to counter my Transmogrify effect, so I'll need a second spell to get countered first. So this, I guess, does not count since it's only instant sorcery or uh, artifact. Yeah, got pretty unlucky. I mean, it's not like their deck has a ton of creatures that are likely to hit another emissary, but they could have easily hit another Stitcher Supplier or some other big expensive creature that didn't save them. So yeah, we'll see. Opponent is certainly decking first. There's Transmogrify, but now Jengitaxius needs to be satiated. So I'll need to find something to get countered first. And hope they don't get a second angel in play in the meantime. Which is pretty likely to happen here. As we see another emissary. So maybe creativity is still my best bet to deal with multiple angels at once. Although the second angel probably just goes for sorcery. Which would uh, shut that down as well. So do we see anything that could win them the game? Not really. So we're still on the decking game plan. Alright, so an angel. Get two angels back. So that's going to shut down our Transmogrify out of dealing with our angels. Name Sorcery and Instant. Guess we still have a Chandra that could damage them. 
but that's not going to stay in play for more than one turn. So that doesn't help. So yeah, Thou is decking, so... Just going to pass and hope they don't have a creature that somehow breaks the stalemate. But Shieldred would be one of them. And yep, yeah, there's Shieldred Whispering one, and that's going to be probably game over. Can make a few tokens with cards like Cultivation that we can sacrifice, but uh, those probably won't be enough to deal with Shieldred long term. So yeah, that's too bad. The shield is an important addition for the graveyard deck to win this board stall. Token down. Chandra. What am I hoping to hit at this point? Killing shield doesn't accomplish much when they can easily bring her back. And our opponent still has 21 cards remaining in library, so we're not gonna deck them before they end up killing all our creatures with shieldreds. So, yeah, can't really think of an out here. So GG's, pack it in and move on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw and yeah, we've got the turn three combo rolled up. So keeping up against a red deck. Turn one then, Soulscar Mage. And then I don't have to take any damage off my mana base. Opponent's not playing any companion, so they could have a Bone Crusher in their deck to potentially still kill us through protection from creatures. For now, a very low curve. Starts featuring plenty of one drops. If they keep up an instant, they could answer my 1 1 token here. Right, it's gonna be skewer my face. I guess if they have a lot of burn spells, they could still burn me out despite having angel on creature. At least her opponent's tapped out, so we won't have to play around an instant killing my token. So, yeah, with her opponent only having two cards in hand, an angel giving protection from creatures is still probably going to be good enough. But we'll see. Pun has got three turns to still burn us out. Doesn't look like a deck featuring Stomp, but it's not impossible. Just a Lapper Runner. Opponent passes. This can make an extra creature to maybe deal a few points of damage. And Pun has got the Lightning to shrink it down with Soulscar Mage. I guess that's one effective way of maybe dealing with the Emissary. Thanks to the Soul Scar. So if they find more burn spells, they can eventually kill the Emissary. Although it's going to take a few more. And then want to play land first. Could also consider just going for Strike at Rich. So that if I draw another one, I can maybe hard cast an Emissary. Seems unlikely. Let's just make a 2-2. So they probably need two more burn spells for the Emissary. Well, oh, there's one. Emissary just a 1-1 now. And their channelers up to 3-3. Okay, well. Could be in trouble now. I think we still attack. And then, wouldn't mind finding another Strike at Rich to hardcast Emissary.
There's Lava Runner. And nothing. Okay, Cultivation, I can enchant my Emissary to give it three additional toughness. So that seems good. Attack. Well, this turned out to be a pretty weird and interesting game. Thanks to that Soulscar Mage. Opponent didn't have a burn spell for Emissary last turn, so they don't have one this turn either. And their opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Strike at Rich, turn 2, Defense at Temple, turn 3, Transmogrify. That looks good to me. And then hope we're up against something like Mono Green Elves, which is by far our best matchup, as they don't have any interaction for our combo, and it's basically turn 3, game over. Hallowed Fountain instead, and a Moonsnare Prototype. Alright, so this is a blue-white artifact deck. So, happy to defend the temple, and then... What to name with Emissary? It's close between Creature and Artifact, because of additional copies of Prototype, which can maybe answer the Emissary. Portable Hole can also get rid of my token, but we'll get a replacement a Rising Start at some point. And then, of course, the opponent also plays a few counter spells that we maybe have to play around. Uh, opponent might be holding one of them. I'll just play my Emergent Sequence, which could pick up two plus one counters from Rising Star. So they might feel compelled to counter it. They don't. I guess never mind, the Rising Star doesn't trigger because it's not actually a creature when it enters. But that's okay. Opponent digs with Thirst. And then maybe next turn we can Creativity for two for opponents tapped out. Do have a bit of pressure in play now. Not sure if our opponent's version is playing any sweepers. Most versions I've seen don't, but you never know. So we'll attack. And then maybe just Transmogrify instead of Creativity to bait out a counter. No, oh, opponent's got a March for three, so I guess that's another card that we now have to consider an instant that could answer our cards. So maybe given that our opponent's so far behind and seems to be playing a more controlling version, I guess we see Parhelion now too. So maybe this is a refurbished deck after all. I guess going for Artifact and Instant is the play. So we'll creativity for two. Instance and artifacts, which deals with Parhelion, sort of. Not with the angel tokens, but with the Parhelion itself. Right, they got a Soaring City, a land. So yeah, the new cycle of legendary lands adds another card type we need to deal with. So, still have protection from artifacts. So... I guess we don't have many angels left in the deck at this point, just the one that we can maybe transmogrify into. Opponent plays Mending twice. Parhelion hits the graveyard once again. And a prototype hardcast. This card, let's say one angel and a land, give the author emissary to maybe hardcast with our treasure. And then I can attack first. Probably want to hang on to the treasure, and let's just transmogrify the 2-2. Two -two. 
get our final angel and name instant. Might be the best line of play. And then we don't have any angel naming creature, so we could maybe copy an angel with the uh, reflection of Kikijiki at some point. Our opponent is actually playing Greasefang, wasn't actually sure about that. So they get to make a Parhelion. Parhelion goes back to hand, so we'll just block an angel to kill it. And then Emissary is still enough to kill the opponent on the way back. Wasn't sure if they were actually playing black, given that they seemed like a straight blue-white version, maybe with Refurbish, but of course Greasefang makes a lot of sense. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand is a little bit too heavy on the Chandras, so we'll take a mulligan here. This one... we can try. It's not perfect, but if we draw an unsap land, we can combo on turn 3 still. And then... Maybe one defensive temple, although if they have a discard spell, they just take creativity. So maybe I get rid of Sequence, since we can Cultivation at instant speed, and the fact that this doesn't make reds actually doesn't matter, since all our lands produce reds if we draw them. And then having double Defensive Temple might be better in a more mid-range matchup if they make us discard Creativity. Turn on Ringleader, so a red deck. Alright, can we find an unsapped land? Not yet. So might have to wait another turn before we can combo. Opponent does go for Emissary. And then, as usual, Stomp is the card we don't want to face. Roiling Vortex. Can still get past our Angel, but is usually too slow. Come on, untap land. Not yet. Let's defend the Temple. And hope they don't keep up any instants to respond to my Transmogrify or Creativity. Anax with Hastes. Rumbles in. So that's gonna hurt. So take 9. Still should be able to beat a Roiling Vortex in time, so don't think we need to jump. So we'll transmogrify naming creature, and then we'll see how this ends up. Could have also gone for enchantments, which would have shut down Annex and Roiling Vortex. Alright, Torbran will increase the damage output from Vortex. And I guess now there's also Ramunap Ruins to worry about. But luckily we have another angel to fetch up, thanks to our creativity. So x equals 1. And then probably get rid of the remnants, keep the token for more mana, don't think it'll matter, but sure. Can name enchantments. So now the only way we die should be to a stomp from Bonecrusher. As Ramana Prunes is going to be too slow, and our opponent explodes. All right. So yeah, we faced plenty of red decks, and the final verdict is that it's definitely a favorable matchup. It's not unlosable, since Stomp can always steal a game out of nowhere, but in general I would favor the red-green combo deck. We also didn't face any matchups like Elves, which is by far our favorite matchup, as we can usually just win on turn 3, the green deck doesn't have any interaction, and can't really kill on turn 3, so if we have a functional draw, we always win. So that's another great matchup for the deck. But as you could see, there's also bad matchups like Blue-White Control, that I haven't been able to win yet after playing many games. So yeah, overall, a deck that has a place in a meta game, can win games quickly, so might be okay for ranking up, especially in earlier ranks, but then once you hit that wall of interactive decks, then it might be time to switch out. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.